reclaiming Christendom, quite literally. Because I want to talk to you very briefly about an extremist called Sheikh Yasser al-Habib. This is an extremist Islamist cleric. This man, uh, he founded the radical right-wing uh, Mahdi Servants Union. He has been hostile towards the government of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Al-Habib is the guy's name. He questioned the religious credentials of Ali Khamenei, Khamenei Iran's supreme leader. Uh, he denounced the Lebanese Mohammed Hussein Fadlaha as Mubtadi. So he, he basically said that he's an innovator of religion, innovator, innovator modernizer. Uh, the group that he founded has been called anti-Sunni, and it advocates for insulting Umar, who was, the, I believe, the second leader of, of Islam after Muhammad, but also Aisha, who, of course, is the, the child bride of Muhammad, the one that the prophet raped. Al-Habib was arrested and sent to prison in Kuwait. He was released under the annual pardon system that they have there, but then he was, his, there was a call for his rearrest days later. He fled over here to the United Kingdom. He gained asylum here in the United Kingdom. He has his group here where he has military barracks where he trains up his Islamists, his fundamental extremist Islamists in a military regime. His group has been blamed for embassy attacks on both the Azerbaijani embassy and the Saudi Arabian embassy, both in 2022, I believe. And he celebrated the attacks on October the 7th. So not a good man by any measure, but somehow given asylum in this country because we can't hate ourselves enough. We invite people who do hate us more to come and live here. Now this man set up a crowd funder, a fundraising to raise 3.5 million pounds to buy an island and to set up a quote, military style training camp with aims to build schools, hospitals, and mosques. He wanted to found this island as an Islamic state based on Sharia, the Islamic law. This is terrifying. He promised, quote, from all over the world to get a visa to live in their new homeland, people would be well, the Mohammedans would be welcome. He, he said, quote, if you want to live free under the banner of the Imam, so the Shia leader, in a special homeland where you feel everything in it reminds you of the awaited Mahdi, everything is the Shia homeland, support this project. He said, here, my brothers, God willing, we want to build a large mosque, a school, a Horza, so a Shia seminary. We want this place to be a homeland to the Shias and the believers. He wants to create a mini Arabia. He wants to create a mini Mohammedan Islamic caliphate off the coast of Scotland. And he found an island, an island where he could implement his plans. And he raised three over three million pounds, I believe 3.5 million pounds, and attempted to buy this island. Thankfully, the owner refused to sell to him. Thank God for that. The, the owner was principled and bold and chose not to sell to him because he's an extremist. But you can easily see how the SMP, as woke as they are, could force the owner to sell to him. So you can't discriminate on grounds of religion or something like that and force the man to sell his own land to someone who hates the land and hates the people. But this land is beautiful. As you can see from these pictures here, this land is 270 acres. You can see there's a little farmhouse there. There's a three-bedroom farmhouse and there's a couple of other buildings that are dilapidated, but there's one, basically one livable house on the, on the island. And it's going for sale for £1.5 million. Pounds. Now, he put a bid in because he wanted to build a mega mosque there, and he lost. But that's not to say this loss is permanent. It's not to say someone else couldn't try and buy it as a proxy and sell it over to him or something worse could happen. So I thought, well, why are we letting these Mohammedans take over our land, over our country? Why not reclaim it for Christendom? So... I figured, let's do it. Let's do just that. Let's launch a crowdfund. Let's buy it for Christendom. I have 350,000 followers on Twitter. 
if every single one of my followers donated five pounds, we'd raise that 1.5 million pounds, then some. So we'd be able to buy this land. Just you guys would be able to buy this for Christ, for Britain. And so I put the crowdfunder up we were, yesterday. So 24 hours later, we've raised £43,390 already. That's, that's not a significant amount of money. And so it's possible. It's doable. Here's the plan. Torsa is the name of the island currently, Thor's Island. Of course, it would need a more Christian name than Thor's Island. That's very pagan. But this is what Christianity does. Take over the pagan lands and return them to the true God. It's available for sale for the first time in 85 years. So the Islamic hate preacher attempted to buy it. Thankfully, the owner refused to sell to an Islamist. So this is our opportunity to reclaim the land for Christendom. Torsa is a beautiful island northwest of Glasgow. It's a real gem in the British Isles, highlighting the marvel of God's creation. So let us put the Celtic cross back in its rightful place. The land has a three-bedroom property, which is good to go. Um, so we'd set up a Christian center for retreats. We'd set up a chapel as well for prayer. And the idea would be people come, don your wellies, get your hands dirty, leave your smartphones behind, you know, turn off your electronic devices and connect with God's good creation. Spend some time in solace, you know, in the silence is where we find God. So we'd have morning and evening prayer every day that people can take part in and they could just relax in the, in take in the beautiful creation as a reminder that there is a beautiful creator. Um, this is, so there's also a range of stone farm buildings on the island. They are dilapidated. They would need some repair, but repairing them would mean there'd be no need to create new buildings. They don't need to build anything new or modern uh, so that the whole island can maintain its presence as, as beautiful as it is. Um, so anyone that does donate, if we don't raise enough funds to buy this in any way, the funds will go back, return to sender. So this is not a scam. This is not a grift. We're not trying to make money. We're trying to reclaim the land for Christendom. If we don't do that, money goes back. But if we do do that, we get to build this. We get to get to keep this for Christ, for Britain, uh, and protect it from the invading hostile forces. So we're hoping to raise £1.5 million. If we could raise more than that, we could repair these dilapidated buildings and get the whole place going. So imagine if we had barracks so that people could come and stay as a retreat to escape from modernity for a while, and just Christians can come and just and spend some time. Uh, so there are roughly, oh, by the way, if you aren't donating from America, they're roughly $1.28 to a pound. So we're not only looking for money, we're also looking for prayers. Money is helpful, prayer is necessary. Regarding ownership of the property, it will be placed into a trust. So that, that means that we make sure it's kept in good keeping and it's of use for Christians for generations to come. So even if I, I was to die, it wouldn't get handed over to some random, you know, it, it will maintain it in a trust and we can make sure that Christians are looking after this trust um, so that it remains in Christendom. And regarding the use, we'll set up a retreat center for Christians, so a place away from the busy day-to-day -day lives of, of modernity where we can spend time in God's beautiful creation. We find God in the silence, away from the hubbub of modernity. And so Torsa will become a place to spend time with him and remind ourselves we are called to be in the world, but not of the world. And so we'll host daily worship services, morning and evening prayer, or matins and vespers, and it will be wonderful to expand this eventually into a religious community, build a monastery in the future, perhaps, with monks growing local produce and producing alcoholic beverages for Britons as in times gone by. There was a time when the monks used to create mead uh, and they used to produce scotch uh, and, and beer. There's no reason we can't do that again. And so I want to thank everyone who has donated so far. I'm going to give a special shout out to, let's look at our top donations at the moment, special shout out to Jason, God bless you, to Rough Kiss. Um, I like this. We've got a quote from Jerusalem here. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Thank you to Robert William Fraser, Dr. Dolittle. Uh, sorry, Dr. Doolittle. I can read, I promise. Uh, um, thank you. Christ is king. Indeed, Christ is king. Thank you, Che Corbin and Shane Cade. Uh, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And I think we'll end that one there. Thank you to everyone who has put their hand in the wallet and put their money where their mouth is and said, look, we cannot just sit by and tweet anymore. If we want to protect our homeland, we've got to do it. And so here's an opportunity for us to do it. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Have a good one. See you on the other side.